most people think that they know, know mathematics. But the bottom line is you don't really get a lot of math uh, from school, again, in my opinion. And I learned this from the Army. Uh, I thought I knew math fairly well, algebra, trigonometry, uh, plane geometry, solid geometry, uh, chemistry and physics and so on. I had all that in high school, so you know, that was pounded into me. But I found out I really only got the basics and so on. So, and the problem is for our, our children today, and you all too, we're in a new century. We're not in the last century anymore. We've gone from an analog world to a digital world. And that's thanks to all the cameras, the smartphones we've got, and so on. But like it or not, these young people are, are growing up totally different than you and I did. One, we used to go from 10 to the 6th power to 10 to the minus 6th power, which is 1 million or 1 million negative. Okay. Now we're going higher than that. We're studying the universe, trying to build a telescope that can reach the outer parts of our universe. Just went operational a couple months ago. So millions of light years away. So and we're going to have to know the math, the science that goes with that, that I didn't need to know when I was in school. Plus, now we're down to our phones. And I want to show you here. Our micro. Here's a camera. Here's a camera. Our TV cameras are this big. This camera will do almost anything any of the big cameras will do if we want it to do it, if our programmers are good enough to do it, and so on. So now we're down to 10 to the minus 6 and lower than that. So that's a tremendous amount of learning that has to be done. So <coughs> computers work on what is called binary math system. Binary means only two things. Anybody know what it means? Ones and zeros. Your whole world, everything you do, everything you see, is turned into ones and zeros. Okay? So, <clears throat> then on top of that, that's not very convenient. Okay? And most of us use calculators anyway, so math is not extremely convenient for us. Uh, but anyway, uh, the next one is what we call a hexadecimal system. So, the hexadecimal system is what engineers use to do most of the uh, things that they do. Anybody know what hexadecimal means? Six decimals? Sixteen. Oh. You're close. Hexadecimal. In a hexadecimal system, all of us know more or less the decimal system, right? We're not very good at it in the United States. We still use the pounds, feet, the foot of some king from England who we don't even know anymore. Uh, pounds and so on. Most of the world uses kilometers, millimeters, centimeters, and so on. So that's the decimal system. That's one through ten. Okay. Hexadecimal system is up to nine, and then it's A, B, C, D, E, F. And that's sixteen. Okay. The one thing you have to realize, the minute you start talking computers and converting to it, computers start working for the zero. And that confuses a lot of us as we move forward in life. We start with one, one through <coughs> ten, right? Computer does it. Computer goes from zero to nine. So hexadecimal is going to start with a zero rather than nine. Okay? So <clears throat> we start teaching our children, my great grandchildren now, they're already learning their colors. Okay? So we start teaching colors. We start teaching shapes, uh, circles. They put the things in, they put a triangle in, and so on. So I start using those in my uh, teaching or mentoring, whatever you want to, want to call it. So the circle becomes very, very important in a lot of things we learn. The other thing, so we call those graphics. Uh, when I started working in computers, there was no such thing as a graphic. Uh, it was all text. Up to 1986, when Windows came out, thanks to Bill Graff, uh, we had, didn't even have GUIs, graphic user interface. It was all textual. Now, since then, most of us work in graphics. <clears throat> so anyway, now the computer programmers are using mostly text. But to teach the children or the younger generation or senior citizens who are just starting to learn uh, computers, we're using graphic user interfaces. And I brought stuff here to show everybody here who wants to ask questions or get into it more in depth. What time did we start, by the way? Pardon? About 520. 520? Okay. 
Oh, that was 12 minutes on that. <laughs> I tried to time myself. It doesn't always work. So, so anyway, and now we have uh, graphics. Uh, that is what we call graphic-oriented computer languages. The most common one that I have here and that we'll be teaching uh, uh, in different places over the next couple of months is called Scratch. Came out of MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Scratch, <coughs> there are variations on it. Another one, the name of it, which is a little bit easier to remember. Scratch, I've always had a hard time trying to figure out what it means, but it's called Snap to. So you have these little graphic blocks and you snap them in. So they snap to each other and each block rep rep uh, represents a routine or a subroutine. So all you have to do is move it in. If you say right wheel, they move in right wheel. Left wheel, then you tell it how fast you want to go, right or left, forward or back, uh, and so on. So and most children today should be at least uh, at the middle, elementary school, at least uh, in middle school, in my opinion, learning Scratch or uh, one of the variations on it. Uh, and then as we move into the, the rest of the world, I started this here uh, type of presentation thanks to Barnes & Nobles. Uh, last year, uh, the first weekend in, in November, they had what is called the mini fair. So Barnes & Nobles is very good about getting organizations in, uh, helping to support the community. Last year, some of you may have seen the Harper Heights Orchestra was there playing right near the cash register for a fundraiser. So if you went by the cash register, hopefully you dropped a dollar into their, their thing. And the orchestra was there almost all Saturday and Sunday when the store was open. Anyway, they had what is called a mini fair, mini maker fair. So the world that we're talking about now is called makers. Uh, when I was growing up, and most of you, they were called DYI, do it yourselfers, okay? So people that did lots of things. My dad, for example, uh, came over from Germany, had an eighth grade education. My wife's mother had an eighth grade ed education, and that's all. Back then, her father said, girls don't go to high school, okay? My dad didn't go because he didn't have, he had to support seven other children, uh, <clears throat> and so on. Yet my dad could build a house pretty much like this. He could put the plumbing in, he could put the electricity in, he could do all kinds of things. We could tear my car engine apart and put it back together. Okay? I couldn't do any of that with all my education, and still today I can. I can draw <coughs> plans, I can tell them what you should do, but I can't do that. So what's happened in the world, other countries, England, Italy, and so on, have found that that's what's happening to our culture and primarily our education and our young children. We're too used to pushing a user-friendly GUI. We push a button and it does everything we want. Push a button, it takes a picture. We don't have to set the aperture. We don't have to set the ISO ratings. We don't have to set uh, the stop. Okay? If we're outside taking pictures of uh, stars, we might want it for 30 seconds. Okay? If we want to take it up a football field, it's going to be maybe one one thousandth of a second. Those are things in my growing up, you had to set all this. Now the cameras will, will do a lot of it for you. And so on. So anyway, anybody know what a raspberry pi is? A raspberry pie? I didn't know last year at this time either. Barnes and Nobles on Saturday we're gonna have a raspberry pi jam session. Now I'm in music, so I thought that well, I'll take a baby by a guitar or violin or or something they were doing. It was not music. A Raspberry Pi is a um, mini computer that costs $35. It comes out of England, and they've sold probably 10, 20 million of them in the world, millions of them around the world. And it's called a Raspberry Pi. If you don't know it, in the computer world, things are named after fruits. Apple is named after fruit. Blackberry, uh, whatever it was. I uh, can't remember what they Personal Digital Assistance, they used to call it PDA. But anyway, they named that. So they named this after that bird. And pi uh, was thrown in because pi is a pi that we know in mathematics, the never-ending uh, number that goes to infinity. So in a jam session, it's a coding session. People get together and they, they code things. So we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, about coding. 
In England, they have coding clubs all over England. I've only seen about four or five in the United States where people get together like this on a Sunday and they have a good time in a house or a school or wherever, a church, and they sit there and they code the computers. They don't look at it. pushing a button like Roy is here, pushing a, a button on that. You're actually going to tell that computer what you want it to do. You have to set everything on there, okay, how fast it's going to do it, how many frames per second, and so on. So they're called coding clubs. And out of that came what they call a jam session. So I'm in hopes that Barnes & Noble, I asked them last week if they were going to have a jam session, a uh, Raspberry Pi jam session. So prior to that, that's England, who's our kind of sister country. We speak English. They don't think we speak English, but anyway, uh, we're somewhat related to England. Italy, which is of the Romance language countries, so Germany, Spain, Portugal, France, all those countries there, prior to the Raspberry Pi came out with an Arduino. So put that in the back of your head, Arduino. And that is what we call a microcomputer. A microcomputer is something that does only one thing. It turns on that light or turns it off. It turns on that fan or turns it off. You tell it I want to turn that fan on when it's, what, 70 degrees in here. I want to turn it off when it's uh, 40 degrees. That's a microcomputer. Raspberry Pi is a computer. Okay, it'll do multitasking. It'll do whatever you want and you can connect the microcomputers to it. So everything I'm talking about is available here that I'm talking about today from Barnes & Noble. So you can go out there and buy them all if you're willing to spend the money for your child. Uh, in my opinion, it's well worth doing. Here's a kit that we're selling, and it's not outdated now. They've got a new Raspberry Pi. This is Raspberry Pi 2. It sells for around $100, and it comes pretty complete. And the Raspberry Pi is that little thing there, okay? So you have to connect your keyboard to it, your mouse to it, your TV set or monitor to it, but all the guts of the computer, just like any computer here or in that camera or in your, your tablets, are in there, which means you can, comp you can uh, program it. I'm doing this from the standpoint of medicine. A lot of our medical devices are, in my opinion, outdated. So, for example, the, where's your, somebody's got a tablet, show, show them the tablet. That little dot in there, that's the camera, is the same <coughs> camera that connects to here, called a camera module, sold for $35. And that's this camera here. So what we're doing uh, for one of our projects is we're putting it on top of a, a microscope. Okay? I can buy these, but the bottom line, the ones I buy only do what the engineer wants them to do that made it in China, Taiwan, Japan, wherever they're at. If I want to do something else, now I've got the power to do it. I can code it, I can program it, and I can buy it for $35. Okay? So anyway, then we get into 3D printing. That's another whole world. It might not come with an adapter. So then you have to start thinking how you're going to make your own adapters. This is 3D printed by my 3D printer. Here's another one. Okay. So now you've got to uh, find a way to design stuff. So here comes my next hint, if I can find it. Yeah. I thought it was organized. Anyway, what I've got is my drafting book from high school. I graduated from high school in 1949. I still have that drafting book. So again, I used to ask my girls, what did you learn in school today? They would come home and say, nothing. You know, well, the bottom line is you're going to have to make sure that they know what they learned in school. But I still have my music book from kindergarten. I still have my... Uh, why I kept it, I don't know. I had no idea it was going to be an engineer. But anyway, now I'm drawing plans for the 3D printer because I took one drafting, one drafting course in high school. And I've got the book. Without the book, I probably couldn't be doing it. And I'm teaching that now to other people. The Arduino, by the way, here's another one that, that uh, 
I don't know if Barnes & Noble's are going to sell this. This is the old one that came out with the new Raspberry Pi. It's quicker and faster, uh, same price. But this is a, a good one on the market called Raspberry Pi for Dummies. Uh, most of you probably know about the dummy books and so on. They're very well written, pretty extensive. They're not really for dummies in my opinion, but they give you a lot more than some, some people bargain for. But anyway, that's the Raspberry Pi too. And this you can't buy uh, at Barnes & Noble, but they come with kits. So you can buy a kit, this is an Arduino kit, you can buy kits for that. And they come with a, a book that's got like 10 projects in it, uh, and so on. And then all the goodies that you need to do the project. So where is uh, Sabrina, Samantha, you want to start passing out the, the paperwork? Okay. Now, I only brought 20, so I don't know sure how well you want to distribute them, but anyway, you'll see on the paperwork uh, a little bit more of what I'm talking about. So go ahead and pass those up. I only have two. I need one. This is a book made in England again, and it's a computer color system. If you look at what we've got there, Samantha does all those things that you've got, uh, the pass out sheets there. All those QR codes are made by her. Uh, the videos are made by our whole crew and team. So this color thing I'm going to show you here, if you really want to learn it, there's four videos that we made and up on YouTube. And all you have to do is read the QR code and it'll take you right to that. This book is a hexadecimal color system.